Oh, God. Who suggested we watch Future Kick? Uh, you did? Uh, what? Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you want to talk trash about trash? Uh, yeah. Look, we're both pretty excited about the release of the new CD Projekt Red game, Cyberpunk 2077, so we thought we might celebrate by watching some cyberpunk-themed movies. We could have watched Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell. Oh yeah, I know, I know. But as connoisseurs of crap, or tasters of trash as I like to say, we decided to go with something else. What would that be, Nathan? Future Kick. Starring the always wonderful Don the Dragon Wilson. There were ten of us designed here. Project Cyberon. Corporate controllers. Our function was to stop corporate crime. But the corporations were the criminals. We did 20 ticks and that was the best one. So look, I'm going to be honest here. I suggested this one on the cover and the title alone because honestly, what more do you want? It's almost satire. Yeah, it's called Future Kick. It should be awesome. It might not be the greatest movie ever made, but where would you rate it, Nathan, on a scale of great to fantastic? <laughs> not great? <laughs> Look, I'm not shocked you said that because this is bad, like real bad. It looked better in the trailer. <laughs> oh, the trailer's a work of art. Earth 2025. The order was a white female, mid-20s. Human body parts are the hottest commodity. It was a slaughter. And lethal games, the cheapest thrill. Future kick. But look, the back of the box describes it thusly. On Earth, in the future, Don the Dragon Wilson takes on a sinister corporation that trades in black market human body parts. He single-handedly manages to restore law and order in a motion picture tour de force, guaranteed to thrill science fiction and martial arts fans alike. Uh, <laughs> I, I got a few problems with that. Uh, I don't know if you do. Guaranteed to thrill. No. <laughs> Marketing tells me that uh, they can expect to ship over 50,000 units of your latest program. The corporation is very happy. When this movie started, I was thinking, hold on, a lot of this footage is familiar to me, and I realised it was a Roger Corman film and that they had reused footage we saw in Lords of the Deep, which is a movie we did a cinema biosis yeah, on. Yeah, it does that Doctor Who thing again. Yeah, which was meant to represent telepathic connections in Lords of the Deep, but here it indicates travelling into VR. But they also repeat a bunch of planetary footage as well. And like a lot of Corman films, this is trying to be another more successful franchise, or multiple franchises. So like Lords of the Deep was a bad alien knockoff, this is a mashup of... Terminator and... I don't know, Terminator and kicking. A few minutes later... <laughs> Well, they definitely took influence from Terminator. Not that you could tell from the opening theme or anything, because it's very, very different to the Terminator <laughs> theme. Don't do that. But I would also say something influential like Blade Runner, just for the cyberpunk aesthetic. And also... Total Recall as well, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Like, I think this film does a few things a little bit better. Like, I know the ending of The Terminator is kind of like a classic high-intense chase, but does it top... Yeah, a... I was going to say, what does what better? <laughs> <laughs> but does it top a really lazy fight with metal poles oh. between Don the Dragon Wilson and Chris Penn? Dragon 
Rebecca Wilson just look bored? Like he's standing there literally waiting for the guy to get close enough so he can kick him in every fight. Is that why they had to add the really, really bad sound effects that sound like I added them just to give it like an extra punch? So in this movie, Don the Dragon Wilson takes on the Arnie role, essentially, and plays a Terminator knockoff android. But this is a Terminator 2 version because he's a good guy in this one. But Don the Dragon Wilson is no Arnie. Like, you can have a bad movie that's carried by a charismatic actor who gives a great performance and kind of elevates the terrible material. <laughs> this is a really bad movie with a bad performance. Yeah, a, a really <laughs> kind of wooden performance. Such flat dialogue. Maybe that's why they threw in that he's an android. What's the job? What are you doing in my room? Where's Howard Morgan? I use contact. What did you have to do with him? How do you know Howard? I don't. Yeah, he's an android. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The first day of shooting, they went, man, we need to make him a robot or something. <laughs> What's weird as well is you normally cast a martial artist and Don the Dragon Wilson is an incredible real-life martial artist. He's actually like one of the best kickboxers to ever live. But that's the thing. But he doesn't do anything in this that you'd say was great martial art. Oh, no, the fights are terrible. Yeah. They're absolutely awful. They're just kind of like him listlessly punching or kicking people in cuts, like in cutouts. It's not even like a smooth wide shot or anything like that. Yeah, which calls back to our trash where we talk about, I know how I want an action scene to look, but if you can't shoot it, yes. it's going to look terrible. Yeah, yeah, we've spoken about that in a trash video on action films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of you kind of need to tap into that expertise and not just go, yeah, even though you're an expert, we're just going to block yeah, it this way, do it. Try and kick that guy. Make it look like you're close. Whiffs by like two metres. Eh, We'll get it in editing. <laughs> but imagine renting this film and going, oh, hell yeah, kickboxing champion Don the Dragon Wilson, and then seeing the fights, and it's just him getting hit in the head repeatedly. Well, that's the thing with this movie. It's put together so terribly. Like, it often feels like multiple movies edited together. Like, whenever they're in the strip club, it's like a cyberpunk scene with moody blue lighting mixed with another movie scene with candlelight mixed with another scene that's just random footage of a stripper. And it's all just mixed together in no logical fashion. I was more shocked the actress from They Live was in it. Yeah, Meg Foster, who actually does a pretty good job in this. And, like, in reality, the movie is about her character. Yeah, she is the main character. She has to go and investigate her husband being killed because she lives on the moon. So she has to get to Earth to um investigate a murder. And it takes uh, two hours to get from the moon to Earth. They are moving, man. <laughs> and, and coincidentally, um, it feels like two hours in the movie before her plot actually kicks in. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, literally, the movie's plot doesn't start until she comes to Earth, and that's not until about a third of the way through the movie. So our main character is only in two-thirds of Future Kick. That's not enough. Cyberpunk is a subgenre that often features some pretty explicit attacks on corporate culture. So in many ways, it seems incredibly relevant to smaller films that escape that kind of investor, corporate overseer production model. Yeah, well, there are some low-budget cyberpunk movies out there. There's like hardware, trances, slash future cop in Australia. Split Second was a brilliant little cyberpunk movie. Yeah, yeah. Split Second, which we did our Cinema Biosis episode on, an absolutely awesome low budget cyberpunk film. <laughs> But you know what I think all those have in common, Nathan? What's that? All of those films are A, written and directed by someone competent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's 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 the it's the Roger Corman model. It was made very quickly. But what I was going to say is that all of those films have a plot written to the scope of their budget. Because cyberpunk is expensive. It's not like you can go find a location and shoot in it. It's You're going to have to build that location. Yeah, even Trances does the, here's a cyberpunk cool part, but then they goes back in time to LA because they can't afford it. Yeah, and it's obvious the creators of Future Kick can't afford much because they reuse the same shot of the city over and over again. 
apparently no matter where you are, it will always look the same. All untethered vehicles will be destroyed immediately. By Cyberon Walker. I've never been to Earth before, Gus. We should have never killed that program. But that's Roger Corman, isn't it? He's all about reaching for the stars and trying to emulate the bigger Hollywood-styled films. Unfortunately, this scope doesn't always benefit the final product, like in the case of Future Kick. That being said, sometimes it works. Like, if it wasn't for his ambition, we wouldn't have an amazing dinosaur film released in 1993. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, I didn't know Roger Corman was involved with Jurassic Park. I I'm, th I'm, I'm trying to figure out where you're going with this. <laughs> Wait. I'm talking about the better film, Carnosaur. Oh, God. <laughs>